The year is 1964. The Vietnam War has been raging throughout Southeast Asia for the past nine years, wiping away things as it went. The Communist Party of North Vietnam, led by Ho Chi Minh and their biggest supporter, the Soviet Union, are fighting against the Democratic Republic fighters of South Vietnam and their key ally, the United States. This is an attack on Laos, the story of the secret war. In the late 19th century, France imposed a colonial system over Vietnam, Tonkin, Annam, Cochin China, and Cambodia, calling it the French Indochina. However, in World War II, Nazi Germany takes control of France, hence known as the Fall of France. Vietnam establishes the League for the Independence of Vietnam, led by Ho Chi Minh and others. In 1945, Japanese forces declare Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia independent, marking an end to the colonial era in Southeast Asia. Just three months after these countries gained independence, the Allied powers defeated the Axis powers in World War II, and France began to take hold over Vietnam once more. Ho Chi Minh realizes this is happening and declares North Vietnam independent, modeling his own Declaration of Independence after the United States, with a direct quote from it. All men are created equal. They are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In 1955, the Vietnam War begins, starting out as a civil war. However, this will quickly change into a proxy war between two of the largest Cold War powers in the world. North Vietnam is being backed by the Soviet Union, and South Vietnam is being backed by the United States. Laos is caught in the middle of what is sure to be a battle. Laos is a relatively small, landlocked country in Southeast Asia. With China to the north, Cambodia to the south, Vietnam to the east, and Thailand to the west, Laos is under major communist influence. NPR's Dave Davies said that, Right. All you have to do is look at a map. When I looked at a map, I could just see it. I mean, China is to its north. Vietnam, North Vietnam, which was then under communist control to its east, it's in a pocket where if you believe that communism would spread like a virus, it was vulnerable and important. In 1960, Presidents Dwight D. Eisenhower and John F. Kennedy began to realize that Laos itself is leaning towards communism. The CIA decides to approach Vang Pao, a general in the Royal Lao Army and a member of the ethnic group called the Hmong. They agreed to help Pao to train the Royal Lao Army for a civil war that was surely coming between themselves and Pathet Lao. Just a year later, Laos begins a civil war that will last 13 years, in which the Hmong did most of the fighting for Royal Lao. However, this did not go as planned by the U.S. as Pathet Lao began to take a grip on Laos. The United States saw that they needed to act, and soon. The CIA quickly came up with a plan to direct communists away from the Ho Chi Minh Trail, a military supply route through Laos and Cambodia to get to North Vietnam. The Ho Chi Minh Trail was where Vietnam was getting a lot of their supply, and if the CIA destroyed it, the enemy would not be able to support themselves enough to keep fighting. The CIA began to plan to demolish the trail. Then, on November 22, 1963, the United States received a shock. President John F. Kennedy was campaigning for his re-election when he was shot twice while riding in a motorcade in downtown Dallas, Texas. At 1 p.m., he was pronounced dead. One of the greatest leaders the United States had ever known had passed. The U.S. continued to plan their attack. Every day, North Vietnam was growing stronger in the war, and the United States knew that they would need to attack soon. If this plan worked, Pathet Lao would be unable to keep fighting in the Laotian civil war against Royal Lao, and North Vietnam would begin to struggle with sustaining itself in the Vietnam War as well. So, in 1964, the U.S. CIA began to put their plan into effect. The bombing attacks had begun.
The Ho Chi Minh Trail was destroyed. There was no doubt about that. The only question that remained was how the communist fighters were going to bounce back from this attack and if South Vietnam and the U.S. would be able to keep their momentum and go on to win the war. President Richard Nixon, however, refused to attack North Vietnam itself, only attacking the surrounding countries. Finally, later in 1973, the United States negotiated a withdrawal from the war. The following statement is being issued at this moment in Washington and Hanoi. At 12.30 Paris time today, January 23, 1973, the agreement on ending the war and restoring peace in Vietnam was initialed by Dr. Henry Kissinger on behalf of the United States and Special Advisor Lee Duc Tho on behalf of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. The agreement will be formally signed by the parties participating in the Paris Conference on Vietnam on January 27, 1973 at the International Conference Center in Paris. Throughout the years of negotiations, we have insisted on peace with honor. Without their strongest ally, South Vietnam could not keep with North Vietnam and the Viet Cong. The communists rebuilt their forces and were able to resume their domination. In March of 1975, North Vietnam forces made a major offensive push, and on April 30th of that same year, NVA tanks rolled through South Vietnamese territory, ending at the gate of the presidential palace in Saigon. The Vietnam War was over. The secret war was swept under the rug, and not many people know about the effect the attacks had on the war, Laos itself, and the United States CIA. The attack on Laos changed the turnout of the war, maybe not by who won, but by when they won. North Vietnam may have won the war a decade earlier if it wasn't for the CIA's attack. This was undoubtedly one of the biggest turning points in the war for the Democratic Republic. This attack also birthed the modern CIA as we know it. Up until this point, the CIA had never put together a war on a country at this scale. This marked the beginning of the CIA known today, and without this attack, this very well may not have happened. Undoubtedly, the biggest effect the bombing had was on Laos itself. Of the 270 million bombs dropped, over 30% of them did not explode. As a result, 20,000 people have been killed or seriously injured by these buried explosives. In addition, less than 2% of the cluster bombs have been cleared. At this pace, it will take over 100 years to clear the country. This agonizingly slow rate cannot continue, and people realize this. Organizations like the Halo Trust go out into the field on a daily basis with the objective of destroying unexploded bombs. This is greatly needed in Laos, and it helps every day, every bomb at a time. While the bombing of the Ho Chi Minh Trail did not keep North Vietnam from winning the war, the communication through this attack was clear. Not only did the CIA realize that communist fighters were passing materials and information through Laos, they also sent a message to the rest of the world about just how powerful the United States military and government really was. From halfway across the world, the United States CIA did what they needed to do to move further in the war. This attack made a mark on the history of the U.S. and the history of the Vietnam War that will not be forgotten.